YouTube, we're back. DSMX, DSM2, Cessna, 182, UMX. Woes of binding multiple receivers with different protocols. I have succumbed to them. I am going to now be doing it in DSM2. Just to demonstrate, I have a DSMX receiver here. Six channel. DSMX. Okay, I've currently got that down rated to DSM2. I'm going to show you how to go back. Go back to system setup. Yes. Scroll all the way down to. Where the heck is this? It's timing, guys. Frame rate. There we go. Change it to DSMX. We're going to lose contact. It's going to reinitiate. It probably won't work, but hey, look at that. It did actually work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebind it in DSMX, though. So this is my, my power is being applied by this other battery. So I'm going to go back into bind mode. And I'm going to bind it. I'm going to bind the Cessna at the same time. Throttle cuts on. Fail safe in the condition I want. Flaps, which are hooked to the auxiliary one um, pins there. Obviously, this is not the servo I'm going to use. This is a pretty heavy servo for that plane. But uh, eventually, I'll be soldering. I'll chop off the ends where necessary, and I'll take off all these pins. It's going to be a huge pain in the butt. Okay? So I'm going to go into bind mode, and then I'm going to power these both up in bind mode. Okay? It's possible they may need to be powered from the same pack at the same time. I don't know that for a fact, though. So for now, since this is still in the proof of concept mode. Ah, dang it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and let that go into bind mode. We're in bind mode. We're pressing and holding. These are both DSMX. I don't know if you guys can see all three at once. I'll try to... Oh, look at that. It caught this one. I don't know if it caught that one. Okay, I'm letting go. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. We're letting this start up. <laughs> it worked! Finally! Guys, that was so much easier. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, so that's promising too. That means that worst case scenario, we'll have a package deal where we'll have a servo, a battery. Oh, I need to get that bind plug off of there, guys. Let's power down and see what happens. Power down and power down okay now obviously at some point this is all going to be redundantly powered for the same pack hypothetically okay this is simulating our flap servo which will eventually be a linear long arm or long throw whatever they call these things servos okay throttle cuts on I'm just gonna power down the radio I want to show you when it turns on it says DSMX as well and then I want to demonstrate whether or not we're gonna have a problem with if there's a latency from power up to power up or power up to power up. Okay, so we're DSMX. Okay, so first things first, let's power the plane. Let's quickly, immediately following, power this. Okay, that's already working. We're waiting for safe to initiate. Everything is still working here. I'm just kind of toggling between my elevator, rudder. Safe on, safe off. Throttle has not been tested. Safe. Okay, safe is working. Looks like we're not having any crosstalk on the channels, which is always good. Throttle cut is off. Throttle, we'll give the throttle for AS3X. AS3X is working. Safe is on, safe is off. Guys, everything is working, including the proverbial flap channel, okay? And if you look real close, you can also see that the elevator is also moving. Whoop. Now, by the way, this servo is from my screw-up, my screw-up puddle. So maybe I should, like, not use a screwed-up servo for my testing since it's been a ridiculous amount of frustration on this project. The other thing I thought is if I were to run the second receiver, 
I could hypothetically run the second receiver off of uh, just like a one-ass pack, potentially. I would have to test that theory. I don't know if this thing will operate on 3.4 volts or whatever they would be at full charge. Um, what I intend to do is I actually intend to tap power in parallel from the servos on this plane. So this little receiver will become very light. So now I'm going to de-energize this just to show you how much this weighs. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the scale fired up here. So it's super convenient to plug this thing in. Okay, so let's plug it in like all the way. Okay, so with the pins, scale zeroed, we're at 4.2 grams, okay? So that's still a pretty small amount. Now, it's only 2.5 grams for this entire thing. So once I lose this metal, it's going to be a ton lighter. And when I say a ton, I mean a lot less than 2,000 pounds. So we're bound. We're bound. Now let's talk about latency. What if we have... Okay, let's check failsafe also. So I'm going to go ahead and unenergize that. I'm going to energize this one first. And let me get a good servo. I'll be right back, guys. Okay, so real quick, while I was uh, searching for my servo, I found these cables that I have, these mini JST connections that were bought from Hobby King. And looky there, we've got power that's also going to be brought in. And I believe we could redundantly tie our positive and negative and ignore our signal line, and that would give us potentially a place that would normally be supplying power to a satellite receiver. So we should be okay then to go ahead and power this device through these two wires with a nice neat very light connection um, but again I will come back and verify that for us but if you want to order that stuff from Hobby Keen, that's the part this is 11RX um, DSMX 6 channel receiver you could actually get up to 10 channels um, excuse me I don't know if you can get the 10 channels right now because the 10 channels are DSM2 which is why I was fighting so hard to get it to work with DSM-2 by downrating this one to DSM-2. Um, and that was an epic failure. So anyway, um, also this, this is a different pinout. Um, it was a size for an orange RX receiver. So we'll come back with a new servo here. Okay, real quick, one other thing. I wanted to show you this Hobby King um, part here, which is uh, H... KM. Sorry guys, it's I thought it was gonna show through the plastic in the video and it doesn't really well. This is an HKM 282A. And then this is an HK 153183 18S. Okay, so the part numbers are different. And I wanted to show you why I'm, I'm looking at these two different servos. Now, you'll notice the E-Flight servo end is very specific, and it does not match that, but it does match this, okay? So you see those are the same, okay? And so, if a guy had a female plug, then he could wire in a female plug to one of these, and then you could quickly detach in the event of a servo failure, which would be super, super nice, but then you have the added weight. Now the reason I think about this is because I have such the device, and I see these little female extensions here, and I could hypothetically hook up these little female extensions to one of those plugs and go into that. But I think, in my case, I'm probably going to grin and bear it and solder it straight on. The trouble is, I don't know exactly how much room I need to make everything work. So for the sake of testing, I think I might end up having to build an adapter. Just wanted to show you that real quick. Oh, and then also I wanted to try something too. Obviously this one won't plug into this plug. But I wondered if this other style, since it is a mini JST connector... I wonder if it would plug in, and if it does plug in, I wonder what channel it would be tied to. My guess is it probably won't work. 
it's a different pin. Okay, it is not a mini JST. That was my misunderstanding, guys. But because I don't have this receiver anymore, this will probably be the servo I use. Since I do have other micro receivers from Horizon Hobby that I may use. So I'll probably try to use this. In that case, I got the soldering iron getting hot. And so I'm going to go ahead and shut off my receiver. I don't need that on right this second. And I don't need this powered up because that is energizing my little VEC, my sacrificial ESC from a crash or whatever. And also, I should be done with these. So I'm going to clean up just a little bit and come right back. And one other thing before I get to cleaning up. You can buy these feather light receivers from Lemon without the pins installed on the DSM-2. Another reason why I wanted to use the DSM-2. I don't know on the DSM-X if you can do that, but either way, this is the LM0027 is the part number for that. Okay. And then the servo that I'm going to use today is an HKM282A which does not have the E-flight end, because I don't care, 14839. And then I'm using one mini JST connector. These are both Hobby King products here, okay? And this is hopefully where I'm gonna tap power. And if that doesn't work out, then I can actually tap into this wire parallel and then pull power from my LEDs if I want, because my LEDs are running off of the receiver voltage. So anyway, I'm gonna get cleaned up and I'll come right back. Okay, so real quick too, let's talk about weight while we're thinking about it as we do this process. This is going to be kind of like a proof of concept transitioning into the actual flap install. So we're up to 7 uh, grams, 7.15 grams with these three things. And I am a little bit nervous that the size of flaps may require a bigger servo. So I might actually look in and see if my Hextronic servos if I have uh, something that'd be a better size for that, so I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so I found two different options for Hextronic servos. Uh, this would be a nine gram, and I just think nine gram is probably a bit much, and then the five, five gram would be a lot more reasonable in this application. So let's just do a size comparison in terms of weight. I'm fairly confident that this five gram servo would easily drive both of these. Um, that's what I would lean toward. Of course, there's gonna be some more plastic involved so it's going to be 6.7 grams, and this is uh, 2.4 grams. So the other thing is you could probably get rid of the tabs and some different things to try to save a little bit of weight. Uh, this plane has payload capability. I don't think we're going to lose too much, um, but it is a little bit disappointing to see the difference in weight. I could probably get this uh, times 2 for the same weight as this which um, might not actually be a horrible concept. Um, it would sort of match the look of the wing, but I just feel like a piece of wire is always the best way to go on a very simplistic flap mechanism like this. So anyway, I gotta do some thought on that, but for now, the thing that's kinda cool is I have a brand new servo now, so we can do some testing um, for fail safe, and then which one gets turned on first to see if that causes a problem. So we'll do that next. Okay, so we're just going to tin these leads. These are the leads that come off of that satellite port. And we're going to use this to pull some power into this receiver. Um, so we're going to get get our tip cleaned, get a little solder conditioner on there, and then solder to tin the tips uh, a little bit longer than usual so we can get into our breadboard. Now the reason we're getting into our breadboard is because we're going to hook this ESC up into a little cable I built that energizes our breadboard. And uh, we're going to go red to red. And then brown to black. Okay. Which is going to give us power through this side. Just to validate that we'll have some power. And then let's, uh, just for grins and giggles, let's go ahead and throw one of these control linkages or whatever you want to call these things, a servo control horn on here so we can see what happens to it so you guys can see better in the video okay so, so now let's demonstrate doing this just to make sure that that wire works first okay so right now our radio is turning on 
and there should be a red light that comes on if it binds. But I'm not 100% sure that we're actually going to be passing voltage in to this circuit. So that's why we test things, I guess. Unless maybe I'm just not making contact, which is also possible. Break contact. Well, that's kind of scary. You see how bright everything got? That makes me nervous. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and unplug this. And we'll just servo in in parallel on this side. Okay? This is just going to go in on the throttle channel. Okay? It's turned on immediately. We immediately have activity from the flap servo. Plus or minus 100%. Now we can open up that range within our system settings, but for now, we have no power coming out, so I'm kind of curious if we're actually getting voltage out of here. So I'm going to test that real quick, and that'll tell us whether or not we need that connector. So we'll grab our multi multimeter, we'll go to DC 20 volts, we'll take our meter, touch the leads together, make sure we have zero, and then I'll just clamp on in no particular polarity. We'll touch those together. So we'll clamp right here. And we'll clamp right there. And it looks like we've got minus three volts. That's a little weird. Not sure why there's minus three volts going to a satellite, but I guess that's the way they roll. Okay, minus three. Nothing. Okay, so that that is not going to be necessary. It's not going to do us any good, so we can get rid of that. Okay, so now that we've demonstrated that this is working alone, let's go ahead and power on the plane and see if we have any issues with uh, coming back from our bind, okay? Which I suspect we won't now that they're both DSMX. Okay, so it's starting up. Gotta wait for the initiation of safe. Okay, so we have elevator, we have rudder, we have ailerons, we have flaps working, and flaps working the elevator. So as you can see here, our servo is moving here, then our elevator is working here. Now what I'll do is I'll go into the flap system and I'm going to change this to fast or normal, just so you can see it a little easier. Take off landing, okay, ready to go. Everything works. Now let's watch what happens when we go ahead and power down the receiver for fail safe. Should go into safe, attempting to auto level, throttles off, and the flaps are in this position, which is the flying position, not deployed, because you may stall the plane, okay? Now, for fail safe, you may actually, okay, so let's turn this back on, make sure the throttle cuts on, let's see how long it takes to initiate, radio's on, RF has just kicked on, and look how quick that was. If the DXA team were quicker, you'd get connected quicker. Everything comes back, safe is off again now if you had flaps deployed and you were i'm going to simulate some power here so you're flying along you got power now your radio goes off this is fail safe now it's going to attempt to auto level and you notice the flaps did not change condition i don't believe okay so let's turn it back on with the stick down turning it back on safe is still attempting to level and the flaps were wherever they were left, which is pretty cool, guys. So fail-safe, while I like it, there isn't evidently fail-safe on this receiver. But there is fail-safe on that receiver, which is exactly what we want. So if I was in final and we browned out, hypothetically, if we lost radio contact with that receiver, we'd be fine. We'd be A-OK, -okay, because the flaps would stay on. If we lost both, but we didn't lose power, then this thing would just auto level. Now you'd probably eventually get to a point where the thing's gonna wanna stall though. Throttle cut is on by the way now and tested. Awesome. So the best of both worlds at this point. And uh, we're pretty much ready to start cutting things up, guys. There's one more thing we have to test electrically and that's gonna be, of course I gotta clean this tip up before it burns off. One more thing we have to test electrically and that is, are we going to need to put a small u back or s back or BEC on this receiver or are we going to pull power from one of the servos and that is the ten thousand dollar question but that ten thousand dollar question is going to be answered 
very soon. So let's do that next. Um, the scary part's coming, and that is where I have to cut the wing off. And when I say cut the wing off, if you guys watch me put these lights on, which went really super awesome, by the way, guys. Um, really like the way it turned out. I forgot to put a piece of tape over here. That's hilarious. I think I forgot. I glued here, and then I taped the front and back. Now, there's one other thing we got to test, and that's the order of power up. We already tested that this would come on first and this one would come on second, and that was fine. But now let's try to test if we can do it at the same time south somehow. I don't think that's going to be real super easy to do. So let's just wait. We'll just do the both tests at the same time. Okay, so that's de-energized. That's safe. That's de-energized. That's safe. This is still on. Throttle cut is on, so we'll just leave that safe for now. Okay. First step when you're talking about getting in at this, um, obviously the, the servo needs to go up on the bottom of the wing there. And we're going to have a linkage that rides across. And then that linkage is going to uh, transmit the, the torque from this to torsion the flaps down. So that's what we're going to do right now. I could hypothetically cut those right now, but I don't think we're going to do that. Let's take these off first. If I recall, these things are kind of a bear cat to get out. Support the plastic so they don't break, okay? And these are labeled right and left somewhere, I think. Are you kidding me? They're not? Or are they same? They might be exactly the same, guys. Yeah, I think they might be the same. It doesn't really matter. We'll just go ahead and pull them off either way. Guys, this is so cool. This is such a long time coming. And by the way, in light of this amazing situation that we're finding ourselves dealing with today, I think I may take some time and fix this little bump in the wing too. Um, because it annoys me that there's a big ding in the wing. I didn't even realize there was a ding in the wing. So while we're shutting that off, let's do that. And this might take us just a minute. Go ahead and run some hot water. And I'm going to show you the shortcut to doing this. If you don't want to put it in a a cup because obviously you can't put a wing in a cup. You can put a margarita in this cup. Okay, so we're just gonna put some water in this cup. And then we're gonna take this cup, we're gonna grab the sponge, and we're gonna stick the sponge in the cup. And then we're gonna take the cup and we're gonna stick it in the microwave. And we're gonna soak this in, get it nice and saturated. Okay? And we're going to use this. This is going to work real, real handy for transmitting the hot water onto the leading edge of that wing. See how I kind of just got it stuck in the water there? One, two, three. Probably won't even need that much. Let's walk away in case the thing screws up on us. Just kidding, guys. Don't screw up. Okay, while we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and peel this tape off. Did such a nice job taping this back together just to undo it. Now, the other thing you guys are probably thinking is, don't you have to take all those pins off? Yes. If you want to save some weight, you'll take the pins off. But in my case, I'm a hun not 100% sure I want to go through the trouble. Because at this point, <laughs> it might be easier to just leave the thing on there. Okay, so we're going to peel this tape. It'll probably take a little bit of mold release finish off of the the foam of the wing, no big deal there. Go ahead and toss that in the garbage and then do the same thing on the other side. All right, let's take this over to the kitchen and pull our, ooh, guys, the tape split, dang it. Makes it really hard to get the tape off if you let it split like that. So try to just chase it down like this, chase it back up if you can and then pull it all off at once. That son of a gun, there we go, got it. We got lucky. Okay, so this thing's probably all over the place bubbling. Okay, sweet. Seeing it. Got water everywhere. Who cares? I don't care. Whoa, look at it. Steaming like crazy, guys. Okay, now watch this. Just put that steam to good use. We can concentrate and really control the heat that's going on to the wing right now because that sponge will help, help us to accomplish that. 
and it's extremely hot, I might add. In fact, I'm going to grab this dry rag so that I can put it right over the top of that damaged spot. Oh, we're getting there. See, I'm just dripping the water on there. Look at it. It's almost out. Remember, if you want to be in the doghouse, just run up and sneak your plane into the broccoli while it's boiling. Awesome. Okay, cool. So now, our ding is out of the wing. And who wants a dingy wing? Alright. Now we have the especially scary part, which is peeling the wing off the glass. I hate this part, and it's super scary every time, no matter what I do. Oh boy. I hate this feeling. I hate tearing apart perfectly good planes. But I will do it for yours truly and for my viewers. Because I really, really want flats on this thing. Ooh, this side really feels stuck. I think I used mucilage to glue this back down. So it's probably going to be super sturdy. And I can already feel it coming, guys. I can feel the pressure. The pressure from my my phone saying I'm running out of memory we're almost where we need to be guys I'm just torn between do I go ahead and try to desolder these things or not I wonder how much weight savings I'm really gonna have by doing that plus then of course I have to solder the wires back in I don't know how how long things need to be so I think at this point if I were to desolder this it's possible that I would flub up another one of the things so that the safest method would be to actually trim these by cutting them off and then I could solder onto the pins themselves but you will save more weight if you can desolder these out that's gonna be a challenging desoldering job plus you're gonna to want to keep some sort of pin so that you get your bind plug on there too. Keeping in mind that your bind plug is only going to be going from the outside to the outside so you could actually eliminate the middle one there. So a couple different things to consider. I'll think on that while I'm peeling this off. Now you know what this means guys. If we have success here then that means the arrow commander is next in line. Oh, this is not wanting to separate, guys. Oh, you know why? Because if I use mucilage, then I can use kicker to release it. Awesome. Now, if I use CA, that this isn't really going to do anything, but it's not going to hurt it either. So the other thing I could do is I could take and... Oh, yes! Sorry, I know that was probably really loud, guys. Yes! I did it. It's coming off good now. And when I say good, it's still relatively good, meaning it still sucks. But it sucks much less. You know what's so cool about this, guys? Find yourself a DSMX receiver with enough channels, and you can add all the features you want. You just got to try to keep the weight low. Oh, buddy. All right, guys, we're at 29 minutes, almost 30. 30 minutes is when my phone shuts. Oh, that was so scary. And yet I didn't break anything. Thank goodness. Yes. Got it. Okay, so now, guys, that's where we end this video. We'll be coming back to you soon. And before you don't, there's going to be flaps on this beautiful bird, and it's going to be awesome. Don't forget to like and subscribe.
come back for more.